Storms, fires, droughts, no matter what happens, people still need to eat. Climate change is affecting what we grow around the world. Joining us now to tell us what that means to food production and what, if anything, we can do to adapt, in Vancouver, British Columbia, Naveen Ramankuti. He is professor in global food security and sustainability at the University of British Columbia. And Professor Ramankuti, it's good of you to join us on TVO tonight. Let's just start with what plants need 101, the bare basics here. What are some of the things that crops need to grow well? Yes, we can understand this quite easily by looking at plants that we grow around our house in pots. Uh, plants essentially need four things. Uh, they need uh, sunlight, um, they need water, uh, they need carbon dioxide that they get from the uh, air, and they need uh, uh, optimum temperatures. And when climate change has an increasing impact on the earth, uh, how do you expect the world's climate will change and therefore affect those four things that you just listed? Yeah, so we're not going to change light very much. Um, in, by putting pollutants in the atmosphere, we are going to change sunlight somewhat. But the main things that are changing, uh, the first big thing is that we are putting more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Um, carbon dioxide is uh, good for plants, uh, but there are two kinds of plants, uh, what scientists like to call C3 and C4 plants. Um, um, but C3 plants are the ones that are more likely to respond to carbon dioxide increases. So they'll actually benefit from increasing carbon dioxide. Um, on the other hand, uh, this increase in carbon dioxide is increasing the Earth's temperature. The Earth is getting warmer. And um, whether warmth benefits plants or not depends on where you live. So if you live in a cold place, getting warmer can actually be good for you. Uh, but if you live in a place that's already quite hot, um, getting warmer can be bad for plants. And then the last thing is that as we are getting warmer, uh, one of the things that happens is that we evaporate more water from the uh, land. And so the land gets more drier, soils get more drier, and that's bad for plants no matter where you are. So let's do some examples here. A C3 plant that would appreciate more CO2, give us some examples of what that might be. Yeah, so let's take uh, wheat, uh, which is a, you know, a, a really major crop. Uh, wheat is a C3 plant, and if we put more CO2 in the atmosphere, wheat will actually benefit from that. Um, on the other hand, as things get warmer, wheat is also not going to benefit from that. And as it gets drier, wheat is not going to benefit from that either. Um, so in the end, it's a trade-off. Uh, CO2 is good, but uh, warmer, drier climate is not good for wheat. Um, and scientists have done you know, models to estimate what will actually happen. And they find that, find that in the long run, actually, uh, the effects are going to be bad for wheat. Um, on the other hand, you take maize. Maize is a C4 crop, and that actually benefits from uh, much more from, uh, sorry, that does not benefit from increases in carbon dioxide. And so it will only be deleteriously affected by increase in warmth and dryness. How about any C4 plants? How would they be impacted one way or another? Yeah, C so maize is a major C4. Maize is a C4, OK. Yeah. So we have, uh, has, there are four major crops that are C4, maize, um, sugarcane, um, millet and sorghum, essentially crops that can grow in fairly dry regions today. Most of the other crops and plants are C3. Uh, so those crops won't benefit uh, from increasing carbon dioxide just because they happen to already be quite efficient at capturing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Okay. But in general, even though there is a benefit from carbon dioxide, most studies show that with climate change, you know, despite the CO2 benefit, um, it, the changing climate will actually be bad for crops no matter where they are. Well, that's what I was going to follow up on. Has there been, I, I assume, uh, in the United States where they have some enormous agribusiness interests, that they have done studies on what climate change, the changes climate change will bring, will do to the agriculture business in the United States. But obviously, we have a different climate in most of Canada. And I wonder whether much research has been done on what climate change could do to the agribusiness in this country. Yeah, there has been some research, but not as much as there should be, in my opinion. Uh, there's been a ton of research in the US. Uh, there should be more in Canada. Um, generally, the belief is that uh, since Canada happens to be a cold country, uh, climate change will be beneficial for us. And that's probably true. Uh, we'll probably have longer growing seasons, for one thing, and farmers may be able to plant their crops earlier. Um, they'll have a longer growing season, which means, uh, you know, uh, crops have more warmth, they can accumulate more grain and so on. Um, the general belief is that climate change will be better for Canadian crops. But on the other hand, if you think about the Canadian prairies, uh, it's pretty dry already. 
And so if, if we have climate change um, creating more uh, frequent droughts or more intense droughts, that can be quite bad for crops in Canada. We need to do a lot more research to understand exactly how Canadian crops are going to respond to climate change. I don't know if you know the economist Jeff Rubin, but he, you know he's written numerous books over the years, and he believes that climate change will be a major boon for Canadian agriculture. Do you uh, share his view? No, I don't agree with that. I think it will benefit us in some places, but uh, we, we have to think about you know, temperature is not the only thing uh, plants need. Um, so maybe some places in the north, in northern Canada will become um, you know, more suitable for agriculture. But we also think about what kinds of soils are there. Um, plants need you know, good soils uh, to get their nutrients. And so if you're moving into, say, uh, you know, northern Canada where we have really poor soils, um, you know, a warmer climate is not really going to help us. And the same thing, again, as I said before, if you have a drier climate along with a warmer climate, that's not necessarily a good thing. No, I appreciate that we'd have, a, a particularly in the prairies, we'd have a problem with the dry temperature, the dry climate. But, uh, I mean, we also have the most fresh water, I think, of any country in the world. So presumably that would be a help against that, wouldn't it? There's a difference between Eastern versus Western Canada again, right? We have a lot of fresh water in Eastern Canada, but not so much in Western Canada. So they'd be out of luck, but we'd be okay here. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> hmm, okay. Is there much that farmers can do today to prepare for the days to come? Yes. Um, there, there are many things you can do at the farm level. The one thing is, uh, as I said before, we may have earlier planting dates uh, as climate gets warmer. So farmers may be able to plant their crops earlier and harvest them earlier, which may be a good thing because you may be uh, able to avoid the big heat waves or, uh, you know, uh, that, might, that you might have in the peak of summer. So you may be able to, able to get your crops out before and avoid the heat waves. Um, farmers may able, may have to better manage their water, uh, have better irrigation systems in order to conserve water. Um, and then finally, I would say, you know, don't put all your eggs in one basket. And so a, a, a diversification strategy in, in terms of growing more crops, rotating multiple crops may be a better idea than just focusing everything on one crop that, that may get hit by climate change. Uh, but beyond kind of farm level um, adaptation strategies, I think that they need to be strategies at multiple levels. So uh, you know, in terms of research and development, we could be developing new cultivars that are more heat tolerant and more drought resistant. Um, uh, uh, the, uh, the government could improve the availability of crop insurance for uh, farmers and so on. You do realize there is something kind of deliciously ironic about a discussion on agriculture where you use the metaphor of putting all of your eggs in one basket. Did you mean to do that intentionally? <laughs> no, it wasn't, but that's quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just checking. Um, are we going to have to come to a realization that once climate change and the effects of it really kick in in a more significant way, there are simply going to be some things in this country that we used to produce that we will no longer be able to? And if so, what? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, most of the crops in this, I mean, the four major crops in this country are wheat, uh, barley, canola, um, uh, and uh, what's the last one? Uh, we grow some soy as well. Um, I don't think, um, oh, and we grow maize. Um, I, I don't suspect that we're not going to be able to grow these crops anymore. Um, I, I don't think it's going to be that dramatic. Uh, on the other hand, I think, uh, uh, as these crops are affected, I, I was I sense that the, uh, our ability to most of these crops, by the way, are exported out of the country as well. Um, it's not all for domestic production, so our export market may be affected somewhat. Um, our the price of crops may change, so consumers are probably going to be affected in terms of how much they have to pay for different kinds of food. We also have to remember it's not just the climate change uh, that happens and how it affects Canadian crops that consumers have to worry about. We get a lot of our food from other places as well. Um, British Columbia, for example, gets 50%, more than 50% of our vegetables, and nearly half of our fruits come from the US, and half of that is from California. Um, so if climate change affects um, uh, the climate in California, we have to worry about that as well. Um, so it's not just about climate change in Canada that we have to worry about, but climate change elsewhere. I and mean, we get a lot of our, uh, for example, bananas uh, come from somewhere else, and we have to worry about that as well. Sure. Let me ask the flip side of the question, which is, can you imagine that there will be some things 
that we can't grow nowadays because the climate just doesn't allow for it, that if climate change kicks in in a more dramatic way, we will be able to grow in the future? Um, good question. Um, I would love to see bananas growing in, uh, in some parts of Canada. Uh, I, I don't. I haven't seen any research that shows exactly what what kinds of crops could move into here. Uh, but one way to think about it is uh, look down into the U.S., uh, where there are you know a whole variety of different crops grown. But I, I, I mean, it depends on how how rapidly and how fast climate changes. Uh, but could we potentially get the uh, climate of California here or the climate of Florida here? And maybe we could be growing more oranges and more, um, you know, other kinds of fruits. Um, but I, I haven't seen any research that shows exactly what our potential would be. Hmm. How about this? Can you tell how much just regular everyday agriculture contributes to climate change in the world today? Yeah, that's one of my... Uh, uh, one of the things I should have added in terms of adaptation itself. I think we always think about adapting to climate change, but we forget that uh, uh, agriculture itself is a major contributor to climate change. Uh, it, it's estimated that a third of our global warming um, is due to agriculture itself, and it's uh, essentially three different things. Um, first, when we expand agricultural lands, uh, this is mainly happening in the tropics, mainly in um, Indonesia, Malaysia, Brazil, um, and so on. Um, as we expand agriculture in those places, we are cutting down forests. And when we do that, we release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which is a greenhouse gas causing climate change. Um, the other two major impacts of climate change, uh, impacts of agriculture on climate is through increases in methane emissions. Methane is um, another major greenhouse gas. It's actually a more powerful greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. And we get methane through uh, livestock production and through rice paddy cultivation. Um, and so um, it's estimated that about a half of the half of all the methane that we put into the atmosphere comes from agriculture. And the last thing is nitrous oxide, which is an even more powerful greenhouse gas. And when we apply fertilizers on the land, uh, crops get bigger, but not all of the uh, nitrogen or phosphorus that we put on the land is actually taken up by the crops. So the excess nitrogen that remains on the soil, a, little, a bunch of that gets oxidized and becomes nitrous oxide, a powerful greenhouse gas. And it's estimated that uh, three quarters of the nitrous oxide that we are emitting into the atmosphere comes from our fertilizer application. Hmm. So, yes, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, just in conclusion here then, can you tell us how much is happening in terms of reforms around the world to cut down on the deforesting, to reduce the amount of methane that's going into the atmosphere, and reduce the amount of nitrous oxide that's going into the atmosphere, thereby reducing the contribution that agriculture is making to climate change in the world. Yeah. At the last Copenhagen summit, um, there was a huge presence from the uh, agricultural community because they sort of realized that uh, agriculture is a major player in climate change and should uh, take a major role in terms of sort of reducing uh, human impact on climate. Um, and I hope that will continue. Uh, as you know, as some people may know, the, the one major thing that countries agreed upon at the last Copenhagen climate summit was uh, to reduce the amount of uh, deforestation happening around the planet. Um, there is a, a term for it, it's called REDD, uh, reducing emissions from deforestation and degradation. Uh, countries have agreed to put in money and uh, you know, uh, promote projects in order to you know, reduce deforestation rates and reduce the carbon dioxide concentration. Uh, not as much in terms of government policies to reduce methane and nitrous oxide emissions. I mean, people are doing research to figure out um, whether you can feed animals a different diet and reduce methane emissions, uh, whether you can change the way you man manage fertilizers in order to reduce nitrous oxide emissions. Um, I mean, it's, the answer is in some ways uh, fairly simple. Uh, we apply way too much fertilizer in many places around the world, including uh, uh, you know, North America and Europe, and just even simply reducing nitrous oxide emissions with a small impact on yield can actually uh, greatly reduce, uh, um, sorry, de decreasing fertilizer application can greatly reduce nitrous oxide emissions. Okay, Naveen, let's finish up on this. How about the behavior of consumers? Is there anything consumers can or should be doing to reduce the impact of agriculture on climate change? Um, I mean, consumers first should probably be more prepared for a future increase in increases in crop prices and i think that's something we can uh, probably anticipate that some kinds of foods that are going to be more impacted by climate change may get more expensive um, the other thing consumers could do is by reducing their own uh, kind of uh, impact on climate 
uh, through their diets. Um, so, for example, if we eat more uh, meat-intensive diets, um, we are uh, having a bigger impact on agricultural lands and the, and the uh, kind of greenhouse gas emissions from there. So by shifting our diets, we can contribute a huge deal in terms of how we, uh, um, uh, how we influence climate change in the future. Understood. Um, Naveen Ramankudi from the University of British Columbia, it's good of you to join us on TVO tonight. Thanks so much. Thanks, Steve. Pleasure. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit supporttvo.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.